Not all fluffy dudes that look like the friendly uncle next door are to be messed with. Fluffy guys that you'll see knock the teeth out of their shredded counterparts in the next few minutes. First up, it's Roy Nelson who proved exactly that. Widely regarded as one of the sturdiest heavyweights in the history of the sport, Roy Nelson was a fan favorite mainly because his fights were always fun, he always tried to deliver knockouts and his chin was unbreakable, which one can attribute to that added layer of fat. Some even say that the 6 foot 1, 264 pound heavyweight would naturally have been a middleweight if it wasn't for all the belly fat he carried, but perhaps it was his ace in the hole, and he proved his body shame is wrong time and again, most notably against Czech Congo, a powerhouse wrapped in lean muscle and flesh who spent most of the fight defending takedowns before he was knocked out cold with a big right hand. Up against the cage either. Now that's what you call veteran power which Paul Buentello possesses in abundance. Standing at 6 foot 3 and weighing 225 pounds, longtime MMA light heavyweight Paul Buentello was pretty chunky when he moved up to heavyweight in the final years of his career when he faced a 265 pound monster in the form of Eric Prindle. But Buentello's experience shined bright in their bout in 2016, which didn't last long. For a minute, Buentello calmly made his calculations before launching a thunderous straight right that sent Prindle to the land of the ghost of the week has been from Prindle. If he touches him, he's done. He is finished. Paul Buitello, the headhunter, just dropped Prindle. While Buentello left Prindle stiff as a board, the next chunky guy literally put his opponent on roller skates. The 6 foot 1 and 265 pound American heavyweight, Tony Johnson, has competed in almost every top MMA promotion bar the UFC. He has fought in one championship, Bellator, and he now competes in Russian promotion ACA, where he most recently sent a ripped 6 foot 7, Denis Smolderev, packing. As soon as their fight started, the two heavyweights swung for the fences, with Johnson managing to land such a vicious right hand just 20 seconds into the fight that Denis had no no idea which way to fall. The thing about these journeymen heavyweights is that they may not reach the top of the food chain, but they are experienced enough to make their foes pay if they are not careful, and Alistair Overeem wasn't careful at all when he faced a crafty vet. With 28 knockout victories in 39 wins and 53 fights, Ben Rothwell is a solid MMA heavyweight who conquered a number of titans of the sport, including the horse meat eating Alistair Overeem, who was an absolute brick wall in his heyday. Rothwell wasn't a small guy either when he fought Uberim. In fact, they were almost the same size, with the American wearing a lot more fat on his body, and that was his secret weapon in the cage, where after a back and forth contest, the King of Kenosha knocked knocked Overeem out cold in half a round. And Rockwell has done it! A massive underdog here tonight! I got in here and I knew who I am. I was not worried about what he was going to do. I knew what I was going to do. And as you can see, the results. I know you wanted this matchup. You got a lot of faith in your chin, a lot of confidence in your all-around game. Rothwell's victory was a massive upset at heavyweight, but definitely not as big as this next one that shocked the boxing world to its core. Standing at 6 foot 2 and weighing over 280 pounds, a pudgy Andy Ruiz shocked the world when he fought the Greek god resembling Anthony Joshua, the 6 foot 6 solid bulk of muscle who was tipped to win fairly comfortably since he was undefeated and a force to be reckoned with in the heavyweight division. The WBA, IBF, WBO and IBO heavyweight champ did have his moments, but Ruiz shockingly managed to drop Joshua multiple times before securing a 7th round technical knockout. Joshua 
The victory was no fluke as Ruiz outboxed, out-toughed, and dominated Joshua throughout the fight, becoming the first fighter of Mexican descent to win a heavyweight title. If you think Ruiz's KO was good, wait until you witness one of the finest fluffy knockout artists of all time. Eric Esch, otherwise known as Butterbean, is a former heavyweight boxer known for his large size and unmatched knockout power. Standing at 5 feet 11 inches and weighing between 300 to 400 pounds, Butterbean amassed a record of 77 wins, 10 losses, and 4 draws in boxing, with 58 wins by knockout and one of his most notable ones coming against the tall and jacked Doug Norris, who had quite the battle against his opponents. Round 1 of their boxing clash was a chess match with Butterbean being the aggressor and Norris countering. In round 2, Butterbean upped the ante and started swinging wildly and in the second minute, he floored his opponent with a wild flurry of looping punches and that was that. like to think of myself as Eric Esch. He's, he's his right hand there, and he gets away with the windmilling during this fight, but that's what it'll have to change in subsequent bouts. Next on our list is another fluffy guy. In fact, he's one of the scariest fluffy guys to have ever competed, and kickboxing fans in particular need to know about him. Dutch Moroccan fireball Ismail Lazar was a gem not many know of. The heavyweight was one of the meanest dudes on the planet who cleaned the clocks of some of the best kickboxers in the world, all while donning a chin that even a nuke couldn't break, let alone the 6 foot 6 and 240 pound South African iceberg Andrew Thompson who fought Lazar in 2015. Lazar was the aggressor from the word go and he cracked his opponent early with a humongous right hand. and then threw the kitchen sink at him to knock him out cold. Oh my goodness! Oh, oh he goes! He is a... He was miles oh, away, Thompson. Oh my goodness! That was a clean knockout! That was absolutely horrific! Now for bodybuilders like Bradley Martin, who think muscles win fights, the next bout is a stern warning. Like Bradley Martin, influencer and bodybuilder Kevin Walter also thought he could stand and trade with a professional fighter and he paid a hefty price for it when he locked horns with Drazan Janjanin, a fluffy heavyweight boxer with 22 wins and 42 professional career losses but way more experience which proved to be the difference. Walter came out advancing with rookie shots in the first few seconds but out of nowhere Janjanin landed a hellish right hand that sent Walter down and out. Now, while Janjanin proved why experience matters as much as power, Bob Sapp proved why it sometimes doesn't. For years, Bob Sapp was one of MMA's most notorious characters, known for his theatrics and his hulking physique that could scare Thanos, which is why his loss to the 2 and 3 bloated Chinese star called Origelli raised eyebrows. Sapp was on a 13 fights losing streak and was coming off a 3 year hiatus when he fought Origelli at Road FC 32, so naturally Sapp's performance was lackluster. Origelli, being the tiny wrecking ball of fury that he was, over Overwhelmed Sap with a barrage of looping bombs. <laughs> before eventually landing a decisive blow that ended the fight in just 40 seconds. Losing in 40 seconds definitely hurts, but imagine losing in the dying moments of a fight you were winning. 
At UFC 114, part-time Chicago police officer Mike Russo delivered one of the most shocking knockouts in MMA history when he came up against the gigantic Todd Duffy, a highly touted undefeated heavyweight who was tipped to be the next big thing in the sport. And he did manage to outclass Russo for the majority of the fight, tagging him with big shots time and again. But just as it looked like Russo was on his way to a dominant defeat, he cracked Duffy with a perfectly timed right hook and sent him to a place where time does not exist. Maybe the fact that his hand is a little jacked up. Russell, oh my God. Now, how many of you know K1? It was an absolute shark tank, which featured some of the world's most dangerous kickboxers and where even journeymen with losing records were killers. Unfortunately, one guy still decided to enter the deep waters without prior experience and naturally drowned. In 2007, seven foot tall boxer Julius Long had a nightmare of a kickboxing debut when he entered the world of kickboxing to face journeyman Jan Norchi, a fluffy South African with a losing record who weighed over 300 pounds and was a menace for the newbie. For nearly two rounds, Norchi absolutely butchered Long's legs with low kicks, and since the boxing specialist had no idea how to deal with them, he kept on absorbing the damage until he could no longer carry his weight. Long did his best to continue, but soon enough it was all over. That ultimately brings us to the number one knockout on our list, which features the king of dad bods, thunderous knockouts, and iron chins. Mark Hunt, the Super Samoan, is an absolute OG of the sport, known for his thunderous knockout blows and iron chin, which have helped him conquer the best fighters in MMA and especially in K1 kickboxing, where his rivalry with the shredded French kickboxing legend Jerome Libana was the highlight of his career. The two battled four times in their careers, with Libana winning three times, but Hunt's knockout win against his rival in 2001 being the standout moment of their rival. In their initial kickboxing encounter, Hunt's deficient ring craft facilitated Labana in trapping him in the corners and unleashing a barrage of strikes in what was a rather lopsided affair. In their rematch, however, Hunt made substantial adjustments. Despite Labana still managing to maneuver him into corners, Hunt opted not to merely cover up and instead retaliated with crisp one-two combinations that stunned his opponent. Once Hunt had his foe on the back foot, he turned the tables on Labana by pushing him onto the ropes and overwhelming him with a ferocious flurry to put an end to the Frenchman's 14 fight unbeaten run. Those are times where fat guys knocked out shredded opponents. And just like fat guys, short guys are often overlooked in fights, but that doesn't mean they aren't dangerous. Check out this video to see short kings demolish giant towers.